Now, there was, again, a lot of action throughout the back of the field as well. And one particular incident, I think, caught the eyes of a lot of people. Nick Sanchez, as you can see on the screen uh, there in front of you, finished in eighth. Unfortunately for Haley Deegan, she finished all the way down in 32nd. And the reason was because of some contact from Nick Sanchez in the middle of the race. She was not too happy, and she made that clear in her Race Week blog on her YouTube channel this week. Take a listen to what she had to say. The two had to run out back, hit me once, and then locked onto me. And I don't think he slowed down for turn three. Just shit me off. Killed our truck. Ended our race. Plain and simple, just shipped us. Absolutely shipped us off. There was no reasoning for it. Literally, that's just a product of all the people in the series. And if you don't race like an asshole, you're the one that gets the bad end of the stick. So it's it goes it goes both ways. It's either swing or be swung at. So it is what it is. Well, the timing of this is certainly interesting as well, because if you remember just a couple of weeks ago at North Wilkesboro, Dean Thompson got sent in the first corner off the bumper of Haley Deegan. And this is what he had to say uh, in an interview that was posted by Front Stretch following that truck race. Dean, what happened with you and Haley Deegan there? And earlier you said that you try to be the cleanest driver and that you feel like maybe you got a race like this. Yeah, that's what the truck series is. Um, it's all take and no give. Um, dirtiest drivers I've ever raced with. Um, yeah, I got a thing. Hot five group, truck on garage, shirt partners, and Toyota racing. You're really mad? You look mad. I got a thing. Top five group, truck on garage, Toyota racing, and shirt partners. All right, Dean Channeling is in her. Kyle Bush and Marshawn Lynch there. He said it another time. The interview continued on there. Uh, so, Brandon, you know, I want to ask you in, in regards to this situation here. Obviously, intentional wrecks are a hot topic in the sport right now based on what just happened with Chase Elliott and that suspension. Was Nick Sanchez too aggressive in making contact with Haley Deegan? Is Haley Deegan coming off as hypocritical to you based on what happened with Dean Thompson or are Haley and Dean both right? And that's just kind of a culture of a truck series these days. What's your take on these situations here? Uh, there's a lot to digest with these two incidents. And what hey, I took note, especially what Haley was saying, this is just a product of this series or the people in the series, I think is what, she, is so, in so many words, that's what she said. And that's what really bothers me the most is that they feel, at least from one driver's perspective, they feel that that this has just become what the culture is in the truck series. And you heard Dean say it uh, to, to Claire B. Lang there about the same thing. This is just the truck series. You, you hit or be hit and, or turn not not just not just hit not just bang fenders but I mean turn or be turned, and that is something that NASCAR needs to be policing. That 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 can't be how we race. Um, now looking at the Nick Sanchez Haley Deegan incident with uh, with Gateway coming off of turn three into four, it's the really fast section of the track. There's maybe a little wiggle room to maybe give Nick the benefit of the doubt that he was coming across the, across the bumper of the truck a little quicker than he thought he was going to. But from the angles we were provided from Fox, it really looks like he saw her in front of him. He didn't like that and said, you know what, whatever happens happens and I'll, I'll get around. And I, I mean, you got to feel for Haley Deegan there. There's nothing she could have done. Just, in front of him so uh it, and what does it, i'll circle back around that's just really what it bothers me what bothers me about it is that this is a it seems to be a culture thing with the truck series and we've seen it at the higher levels too these people are going these drivers are going to graduate to xfinity and, and cup and so they're going to bring their their mores with them and what they think is reasonable and and right and how payback works and it's a recipe for a disaster if you ask me yeah, I think this is a conversation we've had on the show before, um, just in terms of the, the culture that's been created in the sport. And it's not just a truck series. You know, you saw it on the Xfinity series last year, Ty Gibbs certainly ruffling some feathers, including his own teammate in the penultimate race uh, in Martinsville that ended Brandon Jones' chances there. And uh, obviously in the Cup series as well, even with the safety concerns of an next-gen car, we've had two, two drivers suspended here in less than a calendar year for right rear hooking somebody on the front straightaway. So, you know, I think that, the safety innovations that NASCAR has taken have been great. And, you know, people sometimes try to say, but, oh, maybe the sport's a little bit too safe. And I, I don't buy that argument for a second at all. I think you can never have a sport that's, that's too safe when you're talking about uh, man and machine at, 
upwards of 200 miles an hour at some tracks. But I think what a byproduct of the safety innovations has has been here is the drivers sometimes feel like they're invincible. And at the same time, you see NASCAR up until recently, it's been considered highly unlikely. I think now we have a precedent set where if you clearly intentionally right rear hook somebody, uh, the precedent is going to be a one race suspension. But, um, you know, in the past, we've seen drivers get away with doing similar things from that. And they think that, well, you know, if I can weather the storm of the fans finding it unpopular, and then another news story takes the front page and everything, and, you know, fans kind of forget about it from there, then, you know, maybe I can get away with it. And generally speaking, everything's going to be fine. Um, you know, so I think that obviously the, the safety conversation is is something that, you know, we can continue to s- discuss and try to improve upon. Um, but I think it's it, the culture issue as well that, that needs to, you know, really be looked at, uh, especially in the lower levels. And I see a comment here from Chrome Diesel saying Elite Precision 29 calls the Truck Series ARCA 2.0. Uh, I, th- I think he's talking about a, one, one of the creators on, a, on YouTube there. Uh, I think I've watched a couple of uh, his videos there. Um, but, but I, I, I completely agree with that. I think that, you know, a lot of times these drive, cause a lot of the truck drivers are coming from market, you know, trucks have kind of become what started out as a veteran store. And I know we've had this discussion in the past too. Um, it's become a step on the development ladder that a lot of young drivers are taking and the lessons that they don't seem to learn in ARCA, it becomes evident when they get to the truck series. So, you know, you can talk about, you know, what Nick Sanchez did is that as bad as spinning somebody in the right rear uh, or hooking somebody in the right rear of sending them spinning him a trial, you know, probably not. But at the same time, at that point in the race to, you know, not even let off the gas there and shove somebody down in the corner, um, you know, even if Haley had found a way to save that, uh, you know, I, I think what Nick did there was, you know, just probably a little bit too aggressive in, in the moment. And then similarly, if you want to go back to, to what Deegan did to Dean Thompson at North Wilkesboro, you know, it's, it's the same sort of idea there. And she's been on both sides of that. It's not the first time that, she's been upset about something like that. Uh, you know, I'm thinking back to last year with what happened with Todd Bodine and she was genuinely upset. I think, uh, when that whole deal went down and, you know, you flash forward one year later, I think she's just kind of like, yeah, whatever. This is just kind of the culture that we've created. Yeah. I think that that's, uh, you know, something that could lead to more problems down the road. If, you know, that kind of driving is, you know, just considered the norm and not only considered the norm, but generally accepted by a majority of the field. Yeah, look, you're you're at this level of the sport now. Please show some car control. Show some class. <laughs> I don't that's probably too much to ask and we're not race car drivers, so we don't know what they go through, but please just show some respect for goodness sake. I mean, have some give. <laughs> like race. I don't I don't know. It just seems so, it seems like so simple of a solution from way out here, but I guess we don't understand it. Yeah. Well, I mean, that goes without saying, you know, we, Brandon, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think either of us have ever sat behind the wheel of a stock car and driven at any speed or done the NASCAR racing experience or anything like that. So I have no idea. I, I, I fully acknowledge that I don't know what it takes, you know, to, to control one of these cars. And I understand that it's a lot harder than it looks. It's a lot more than just, you know, a bunch of idiots turning left all day going in circles and that stereotype. I, I completely un- understand that, you know, it's, it's a very difficult thing to do and to do well. And that's why, you know, we appreciate the talent of the drivers that make it not just the Cup Series, but those that have already made it this far, that are on the brink of making the Cup Series. It's, you know, the, the worst drivers that we talk about on this show are still better than 99.999 repeating percent of the population of what they do. I mean, it, it is an incredibly, incredibly challenging uh, skill set to master. And, uh, you know, but, but at the same time, I think that that shouldn't stop people from being able to analyze the situation and say, Maybe you could have backed off the gas a little bit at this point in the race, uh, going down to the corner with a truck or a car uh, in front of you. And I don't know. I mean, it's a very interesting time in, in the sport right now because we we're, we have a situation where in the Cup Series, it's a very hot topic. And, you know, there, there, there were talks from the Childress camp. Maybe Austin Sindrick should be suspended this week. I don't think that that situation uh, was even close to what Chase Elliott or Bubba Wallace did uh, to Denny Hamlin or Kyle Larson, respectively. But you know, based on what we've seen the last couple of months here, it, it leaves the question out there that maybe we should look at the SMT data and make sure that what we saw with the eye test actually matches what actually happened there. So there's a lot of sensitivity going around that right now. And I think even if it's not a right rear hook, you know, maybe I, I certainly hope that NASCAR starts to take a closer look at these incidents and uh, maybe, 
you know, during one of the driver's meetings, sits everybody down and says, you know, we're tearing up a lot of stuff out there. Let's let's try to, like you were saying, Brandon, just just go out and race hard, but respectfully and try to avoid this because, you know, as we've been talking about the last several years, it seems to have been building and there's no sign of it slowing down anytime soon.